Hi, this is Suman. In this video, we are going to deal with power electronics. Coming to the topic, most of the switching applications make use of uh, power semiconductor devices. So, let us know in detail of these power semiconductor devices. These power semiconductor devices are considered as heart or soul of a power electronic equipment. These power semiconductor devices are used as a switches. That means when they are in on state, they are going to where we need to operate in saturation region. When they are in off state, we need to operate in cutoff region. These switches are basically three types. That is, first one uncontrolled switch, and the second one is semi-controlled switch, and the third one is a controlled switch. The first one, uncontrolled switch, as the name itself suggests that we cannot control the diode in on state or in off state externally. Whether the diode is in on state or in off state depends upon the circuit operating conditions. Say diode for an example, consider this circuit when the positive voltage is applied across a diode. That means when a positive terminal of a voltage is connected to the anode of the diode and the negative terminal of a voltage is connected to the cathode of the diode, then the diode is in power biased condition. So a current flows from anode to cathode. It acts as a closed switch. That means it is an on state. Consider this circuit when the negative voltage is applied across a diode, then the negative terminal of the voltage is connected to the anode of the diode, and the positive terminal of the voltage is connected to the cathode of the diode, then the diode is in reverse biased condition. So no current flows from anode to cathode. So it is considered as an open switch and it is in off state. So we can conclude that. We cannot control the diode externally, either in on state or off state, but it depends on circuit operating conditions. Now, coming to the second classification, semi-controlled switch. The best example for the semi-controlled switch is a thyristor, which is a three-terminal thyristor, anode, cathode, and a gate. Thyristor can be turned on by giving a pulse to the gate terminal. But after it is turned on, we cannot turn it off by using the same gate terminal. The turn off condition of a thyristor depends on the circuit conditions. So, we can control only the on state of the thyristor externally by giving a gate pulse. But we cannot control the off state. So, it is named as a semi control switch. Coming to the third one, a controlled switch. Control switch is either we can turn on or turn off by using a control terminal. Consider example BJT by giving the base current IB to the uh, transistor, we can turn it on. By making a base current IB equal to zero, we can turn it off. So a control switch can be uh, defined as we can control the uh, thyristor or uh, any switch in both the directions, that is in on state or in off state. Now, we are going to discuss these uh, switches one by one. Now, coming to the topic diode, as we already know the PN junction, when the positive terminal is connected to the P type and the negative terminal is connected to the N type, the flow of electrons takes place, that is, connection, of, connection takes place. In this state, PN junction acts as a forward bias. In the same way, when the uh, negative terminal is connected to the P type and a positive terminal is connected to the N type, there exists a depletion region and flow of electrons doesn't take place. So, a P N junction acts as a reverse bias. This we already know. In a similar way, a diode, when the positive terminal of uh, anode, when the positive terminal of voltage is connected to the anode and the negative terminal of voltage is connected to cathode, as I already said, diode acts as a forward biased condition. Diode conducts the current from anode to cathode. So, it can be considered as a closed switch. As the current flows from anode to cathode, the resistance offered by the diode in the forward biased condition is very, very low. When the anode of the diode is negative with respect to the cathode, then the diode acts as a reverse biased and it can be considered as an open switch. As no current flows from anode to cathode, the resistance offered by the diode in the reverse biased condition, Rb, is very, very high. 
Now, coming to the ideal IV characteristics of a diode, consider an ideal diode. Diode of two terminal anode and cathode. Let ID be the current flowing through the diode and the voltage across the diode be VD. When anode is positive with respect to cathode, anode is positive with respect to cathode, diode is in power biased condition. Therefore, current flows through the diode from anode to cathode. The resistance offered by the diode in forward biased condition is very very low actually, but ideally it is zero. Therefore, as resistance is zero, large current flows for the uh, positive voltages. So, large current flows for all the positive voltages as shown in the graph. When the anode terminal is negative with respect to the cathode terminal, the diode is in reverse biased condition. Therefore, resistance offered by the diode in reverse biased condition is very very high actually, but ideally it is, Rb is tends to infinity. As resistance is infinity, current is zero. So, for all the negative voltages of uh, a diode, the current is zero. So, the ideal VA characteristics of a diode seems to be written like this. Coming to the practical IV characteristics, in the same diode, acts when uh, anode is positive with respect to cathode, it is forward biased, as I said earlier. With increase in VD, with increase in positive voltages of VD, the diode current slowly increases. Diode current is initially zero, it will be slowly increases. Value is very small until the positive voltages of VD reaches to the uh, cutting voltage V gamma. Until this point, the diode, the diode connects a current of very small. Beyond the voltage of uh, cutting voltage, beyond the cutting voltage, the current through the diode rises rapidly. For a silicon, the cutting voltage is 0.7 volts. When the anode is in negative with respect to cathode, it is in reverse bias condition. Therefore, a small reverse current, which is a, a magnitude, which is known as a leakage current, flows when the voltage in the negative direction. Up to the point, breakdown voltage. When the negative voltage increases and reaches a breakdown voltage, the current suddenly increases. At the breakdown voltage, the diode, which is a practical diode, acts uh, conducting. That means a practical diode is conducting in the reverse direction. So the current from at the breakdown voltage increases rapidly. If we not limit the current in the reverse direction, it may lead to damage of the diode. It's simply destructive. So we have to limit the current in the reverse direction by making uh, by connecting a resistance in series with that. Now we are going to discuss uh, some important parameters to be considered in the on-state and off-state operation of a diode. During the on-state operation of a diode, a uh, forward voltage drop occurs in the on-state. Consider the forward voltage drop B, uh, Vf and the current flowing through the diode be VD. When the product of VF and VD gives the on-state connection losses. On-state connection losses is given by the formula VF into IV. Now, during the off-state, off-state condition is a bit important because during the off-state, depending upon the input voltage, the current starts flowing. That is indicated by IF. As it is offset, we are going to off the diode, we are going to turn off the diode. That is, when the input voltage is gradually decreased to zero, the current starts decreasing. The current starts decreasing and it reaches to the point where it becomes zero. Still, the diode is uh, continued to connect for a certain period, which is known as TR. The diode co connects to a current which is a peak value is known as a reverse recovery current. The reason for this uh, st still connecting of diode is the magnetic carriers which are there require certain time to 
recombine or to get neutralized. Here, the uh, reverse recovery time can be defined as a time from the point where the current becomes zero to the point where the uh, reverse recovery time, reverse recovery current is 25 percent. That is 0.25 into IRR. The time between this point to the 25 percent of IRR is defined as a reverse recovery time. The shaded region which I mentioned here is reverse recovery charge which can be calculated simply uh, simply assume that it is a linear which may be linear it, it seems to be look like a triangle therefore half into TRR into IRR this is the operation in the half state now we will generally talk about that uh, about the diode when you go to the shopkeeper and ask for a diode we cannot ask it simply a give a diode here a specification plays an important role Within the diode, he gives a data sheet consisting of a current rating, maybe uh, 75 amperes, and a voltage that a uh, diode can block, maybe at 1200 volts or 1100 volts. And including that, he may mention that diode recovery time period, maybe 0.2 microseconds. Their uh, reverse recovery time plays an important role. Coming to the second one, semi-control switch. The best example for the semi-control switch is a thyristor. A thyristor is a three-terminal device with an anode, cathode and a gate. It can be turned on by giving a simple gate pass to the a gate terminal. But when it's turned on, we cannot, be, we cannot turn it off by using the same gate terminal. The turn-off condition of a thyristor depends on the circuit conditions. So, we can uh, control the turn off turn on condition uh, using externally but we cannot control the turn off condition so it is named as semi control switch coming to the last one control switch it can either turn on or turn off using the control switch for example take bjt by giving the current to the base base current ib we can turn on the thyristor by making the base current zero, we can turn off the thyristor. 